Hey, what's up? It's the Dinner Road Show, episode 30. It's Bill and Ian. Um, we have a lot of stuff here. Uh, and so let's just let's just keep it rolling because I'm feeling I'm feeling good about the direction of the podcast now. And I'm I'm jazzed about the new the new run times. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, things are looking good. We're at we're at 30. That's a nice round number. Um trying not to think about the the impending my own impending like mortality of getting closer to turning 30 with that number but um you know just kind of keeping that in the back in the back pocket um yeah <laughs> <laughs> um let's open with a dead wrong because um i do want to <laughs> i do want to apologize for something i did last week so let's just let's just open with one of those real quick it's false no way not this time we created it not this time no um so last week when we were talking about dune uh you were um about to get into this uh very serious discussion of like the themes of the the white savior you know in the movie um Mm -hmm. (laughs) and before (laughs) and before you're about to do that um I said, "Oh, he just wants to get his dick wet," and <laughs> and and the disappointment in your voice <laughs> after I said that was you're just like, "Please, please don't." <laughs> so yeah, wanna, you know, I was I was waiting all week to talk about this movie. I, I know. was very eager to get into into the gritty details. I know, and then yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to apologize to you, uh, I guess, and to God, uh, (laughs) I guess the only thing I ask, um, is that if you are going to go down the road of getting canceled, that you just don't take me with you. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, that, that's, that's dead rock for this week. (laughs) <laughs> um and I left it in. I didn't edit it out. I left it in. Good. Um so I'm I'm just doubling down, I guess. Maybe I don't mm-hmm. know. Um You purposely le- you purposely left it in and then apologized for it yes. the following week. <laughs> yes. Um so yeah, so speaking of um what's wrong with me, it's uh, another edition of what weird shit does Bill believe. Um I don't have You a don't have a yeah, you don't have like a a theme song for this yet. No, I don't have a theme. I don't have a uh, really a proper title for it yet. Um, so last week uh, we talked about why I'm afraid of mirrors, and um, in doing so, um, I mentioned how I've had dreams that have um, come true. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I thought, oh, what better way to continue the segment than to talk about that? So that'll be this week's topic. This is going to be interesting because I really don't like when people discuss their dreams. Most people don't. Yeah. Yeah. Most people don't. Yeah. Um, but I do feel like you're bringing something different to the table here. Sure. So. Yeah. Um, so let's just get into a little bit of Oniromancy. Um, and that is uh, from the Greek dream and prophecy. And it is the the process of divining the future from your dreams. Um, and Oneirocritic literature refers to the ancient format of dream interpretation. So the ancient Mesopotamians and Sumerians believed that dreams were highly important for divination. Um, and this goes back to like 3100 B.C., Mm-hmm. Uh, they also believe that dreams could be used to see into other worlds and that in, in doing so, part of the soul would actually visit those other worlds during the dream. Um, and, oh, I'm going to butcher this. Oh, boy. There's a surviving dream collection called the Iskar... Z- who, buddy? Zukiku? Shit. You want to take another shot at that? Ishkar, <laughs> Ishkar, Ishkar Zokiku, Zakiku. Let's go with that one. Yeah. Okay. And that is the um, cortex of the god Zakiku. 
Um, and Zakiku is the was the uh, like Sumerian dream god. Um, and so this was a, it listed dream scenarios and predictions for the dreamer based on those scenarios in the dreams uh, and like gave examples. Um, and then a lot of the examples would be like based on puns and wordplay. Like I forget what the um, the ancient language was. Um, it's like a Akkadian or something like that. Um, but it would be like wordplay. Um, so like it, it, would, it would just be like a pun on if this something that happened in your dream, then something like this would happen in, in real mm -hmm. life. But it would just be like flipping a letter around based on the, the language used. Um, so the Egyptians, they believed that uh, dreams were um, basically oracles and they brought messages from the gods. Um, and often they would incubate dreams in sanctuaries and sleep on dream beds. Um, dream is, there anything, they, is there anything different about a, a dream bed? Like the way it's, like what it's made out of or constructed or anything? Um, I'm not sure. I, I It might have just been the, the fact that it was like in this, like, you know, sanctuary or temple-ish kind okay. of thing. Um, so dream divination was also common in the Greco-Roman tradition. Um, and one surviving Greco-Roman dream book, in fact, it might be like the only dream book that survived, the uh, Onira Critica by, what is that? Oh, my, I can't even read my own fucking handwriting. Arima Dronis. Oh, you took physical notes for this. I did. I did. Arte Fuck. Artemidoros. There we go. Artemidoros. Uh, he says that all dreams are divided into two categories. There's the allegoricos, which comes from the uh, the Platonic belief that predictive dreams, they come from the impure soul. And then the other category is the uh, theorematicos. Theorematicos, yes. And that is the dream represented in the pure state of the soul. Mm -hmm. um, in Arabic traditions... Uh, Dreaming about numbers or specific Quran chapters was like a primary source of like dream divination. Um, I didn't know we'd be getting a full history. This is great. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I got to do the research here. Um, and so precognition comes from the Latin before and uh, acquiring knowledge. Um, it's also known as prescience and is the ability to see events into the future. Uh, Aristotle wrote in uh, his On Divination and Sleep that, quote, it is quite conceivable that some dreams may be tokens and causes of future events, um, but, quote, most dreams are to be classed as mere coincidences. And uh, that's an important point because it ties into the Jungian belief. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> In synchronicity, um, which is the uh, way to describe circumstances that appear meaningful, meaningfully related, yet don't have a causal connection. Mm -hmm. And Jung described this as a causal connecting principle. Um, and so it is a way to refer to like subjective experiences and events that you can connect to in the mind that seem to be causally unrelated to each other that have some kind of unknown connection. Mm -hmm. um, and Jung believed that it was the collective unconscious that connected these events together. And so the causality of them either didn't matter or there was just um, like a lack of what we would think of as a logical causality or like a, 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 a um, I guess, observed causality. Um, and there is the Polly Young conjecture, which was a, sort of like a methodology for, um, I guess, uh, describing uh, synchronicity. And okay. it, it, it is basically... Um, using various elements of quantum theory um like complement 
uh, what is it, complementarianism um, and the observer effect, uh, as well as quantum entanglement to uh, describe this a causal connecting principle. Um, and it is basically trying to form a scientific basis for the collective unconscious. And I forget what the, what is the name of the, there's a, there's a name of a, um, cause this is the part I didn't write down because I was going to have way too many notes. Um, there is a, a, a name for the theory of there's a field in like quantum, um, quantum mechanics because fucking David Lynch wrote about this in his uh, memoir. Uh, rel- relativity. No, um, no, no. I'm just going to try and start naming naming the ones I know. <laughs> well, anyway, um, supposedly a, a a field that uh, where where like at the quantum level, where um, like some particles are happening. So I'll, the, 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 anyway. Um, <laughs> particles are happening. Particles are happening, man. And because uh, Lynch is writing about this, and so he believed that whenever you meditate, you can get to a state where you can tap into this field. And oh, that's like his his transcendental uh, meditation, right? Yeah, and it's basically the same as what Jung describes as the collective unconscious. Mm. Um, and so what i'm getting at here is that uh if if you're dreaming you might be tapping into the this this field this collective unconscious this other um i don't want to say plane because that makes it seem like it's uh potentially more mystical than it is but um you know what i mean you know what i'm trying to say right mhm i'm going to butcher this too because this is fucking french but uh, déjà rêve is the feeling of having already dreamed something that is being experienced. So, um, oh, okay, yeah, there are there's a whole bunch of déjà's. I don't know if you know know about that. Um, yeah, I, I learned that recently because I think yeah. you brought one up. You brought one up recently. I don't know if it was on the show or not, but I thought déjà vu was like the only one. But then I learned right. a whole there's a whole host of them. So. No, there's a bunch of them. Yeah, um, yeah, because déjà vu is like the everybody knows that that's the feeling of like you've already experienced something that you're currently experiencing Mm -hmm. um to like an uncanny degree um and then you know that um not to not to derail this no please and i don't even know if i can explain this in a way that makes sense but i've i've had this this uh weird thing every now and then um where like i'll just wake up in the morning and for the entire day i'm just hit with I don't know if I would call it deja vu, but like, there's just like a familiarity, um, that just kind of like washes over me, um, for like a split second, uh, just like no matter what I'm doing that day. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like, cause you know how like deja vu is really like, it's an instance of something, right. That you, that like triggers, that sensation but for for this like it's an entire day and i'll be doing all sorts of different things but i get that feeling um yeah and then you know i can't quite recall what it is you know like Uh as it's happening but it's definitely like a familiarity and it just like so comes and goes throughout the day extended yeah it's like an extended one and it's just like um it's like almost like mini deja vus that are happening like throughout the entire day Mm-hmm. Um, I think the longest it's lasted is maybe two days, and then it'll go away. Um, uh, let me let yeah. me hit, let me hit you with this. Okay. Deja vu. Deja vu. Yeah. Okay. What's that's, that? That that's French meaning already lived. Okay. Now this is the uh, an intense feeling of having already lived through the present situation, and um, yeah, mm. it's considered a pathological form of deja vu um and it's this intense feeling of familiarity um where you feel that you have lived throughout either a day or a situation several times and so then you will kind of like feel off and withdraw from whatever you're doing and like kind of 
get, yeah, that's, get, get weird with it. That's not, that's not quite it. Okay. Um, okay. So it's like almost as if like I, there's like a, a memory of something, right? Mm-hmm. That is just periodically throughout the day being like recalled, but mm. I can't quite grasp what it is, but I'm being reminded of it. Um, throughout the day like say i'll be watching something on tv and like a character says something and it just reminds me like vaguely of this thing right but then it'll go away before i can even really grasp what it is and then later on it's what's that like get to the thing before i can get to the thing yeah and it's like that'll just happen many times throughout the day and it's very strange okay so then let me hit you with this okay (laughs) presque vu okay So this means almost seen. It is the intense feeling of being on the very brink of a powerful epiphany, insight, or revelation. Mm -hmm. Without actually having the revelation. Yeah, see, this doesn't feel like any sort of revelation. It just feels like uh, something familiar that is that I know, like that I know of, and I just can't quite grasp what it is. But it's not like some sort of like revelation of like something... The feeling is often therefore associated with a frustrating, frustrating, tantalizing sense of incompleteness or near completeness. Well, yeah, there is that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So maybe it's not a revelation, but it's like you think it's a memory or you think it's something that you're like almost unlocking. Yeah. It's like almost like I wake up and like my brain is sort of off. <laughs> yeah. Because like usually it goes away after I wake up the next day. So it's like I have to like go to bed and like reset to get rid of this you mm, know it's, it's mm-hmm. very strange yeah that almost seems but yeah like that like last a combination one combination of the two though it is a bit like a combination but the last one was definitely the closest sure the closest to describing it yeah mm. anyway interesting um so yeah so often in the the uh cases of where people like me believe that their dreams can't tell the future they are usually explained away with deja vu or uh deja rev where it's like oh you just you feel like you dreamed this or you know whatever um Mm -hmm. or like like whenever you have a feeling of deja vu um you you cut you come to rationalize it as like oh i must have dreamed this where that's why it feels so familiar um rather than it being some something something else um uh and i had to i had to stop doing research (laughs) for this because okay because it was it was going too much especially every time i get into the synchronicity and i do this i do this on purpose and then i hate myself because i always find some more shit (sighs) because i needed to do this for another thing that i'm working on but um so then i found this thing called synchro mysticism um (laughs) and it is uh the art of realizing meaningful coincidences in the seemingly mundane with mystical or esoteric uh significance and then it is uh a part of something called chaos magic and um it is uh, about uh frequently entering into an altered state of consciousness and manipulating symbols to obtain objective results in physical reality that's a lot there. That's there's a lot going on there. But I am, f- I am fucking fascinated, and I had to stop looking at it, uh, because then. That, Wait, you're telling me you stopped as soon as you got to chaos magic? Yes, because That's like I was the like, coolest thing ever. Because no, because then I was like, no, this would be my whole week. This would be my whole yeah. week. Yeah, um, fair. Because like, with deja vu and shit, like then I start thinking about like chaos theory and things. Like, do you ever have that sense that um. Like it's, it's like a, it's like a depersonalization thing where you're like, um, feel like you're observing yourself. Is that sort of like, um, like disassociation or no? Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. See, I've, I've heard people talk about that quite a bit. Um, I don't know that I've experienced it. Mm. Um, I, it used to happen to me a lot whenever I was younger, um, maybe before I was like fucking heavily medicated. Um, but like whenever I was a kid, it would always feel like. I would always like in my head, it would always be like, oh, I'm watching myself on TV right now. Oh, interesting. Even as I was like walking around and doing things and like I knew this character of Billy that was walking around 
and doing things and like actions that I was taking, even though whenever I was like consciously making it, I was like, oh, I'm going to open this door right now and do like, like every little step that I was taking, I would I mean, like it, narrate how different, it. How different is that from just being very self-conscious? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But it would Cause, feel like cause I, I get was that watching myself um, would be the thing. Like mm -hmm. I was actually observing myself. I guess um, maybe maybe the difference there is you feel like you're observing yourself, whereas with self-consciousness, it's you, you feel like others are observing you, right? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and so then I would even think like from a young age about like, oh, what would happen if I didn't open this door right now? Or like I didn't get up and walk around right now. Like what would these choices lead to? And so then like even without knowing what like chaos theory was, um, I would just like sort of ponder its like repercussions, mm -hmm. you know, um, I feel like we're getting off track, but, uh, like now we're just getting like a weird, uh, cosmology of my mind, but, um, <laughs> yeah, I would just be very, very aware of that. Um, and I don't, I don't know if that's like a common thing with like kids where they would just be like very aware of their, you know every microscopic thing that they did or if i don't know hard to say hard yeah. to say <laughs> um but anyway dreams so yeah so i have had dreams that have come true with um eerie precision um i feel like the 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 best example that i have and um this is going to get into the weeds a little bit but it's because i don't know how else to explain it other than with completely describing the the um the circumstances so i had a dream that i was i had a dream that i was um in a classroom uh there was a there was a whiteboard um gray carpeting uh little half desks can i ask um how how old you were um i don't know it it might have been uh senior year or freshman year of college okay senior year of high school freshman year of college i mean mm -hmm. um and on the uh whiteboard um a male teacher with glasses and brown hair was writing emily dickinson i was sitting on the far right side of the classroom um, about three seats back, he asked some kind of question. Uh, nobody was answering. And then at a certain point, I raised my hand and I answered Thomas Pynchon. Now, is this, um, is this prior to like you being assigned to this class? Like, is this like before the school year starts? Yes. Okay. Cause I feel like that's, that's pretty crucial here. Yes. So, uh, Fast forward to sophomore year of college. I am in, this is American Lit 2, I believe, whatever mm -hmm. the class was called. Um, and I have a teacher with brown hair glasses in a classroom, gr you know, great little half desks, gray carpet. There's obviously a whiteboard. I don't, I don't remember, I don't remember the dream at like, as soon as I'm assigned that class or whatever, mm -hmm. but then whenever we are studying for the final, we're doing like, uh, a quiz thing or like a jeopardy or something like that in class. And at a certain point he writes Emily Dickinson on the board and then he's like <laughs> answering questions and then nobody knows the answer to this one question. And so it like takes a while. Nobody's answering. And then I know the answer because it was about um, Thomas Pynchon's his story about a fucking uh, a blimp. And oh, so, see, I was gonna I was gonna ask like if you before he even asked the question, you were like, "This is my moment." Like you knew this was your moment, and you didn't even have to to know the the answer. You knew it was Thomas Pynchon. No, see, I knew the answer. I didn't know the answer because of the dream. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So that's the weird thing is that like the events play out regardless of whether it's like I know it from the dream or not. Like I like I lose control of it. Um, yeah, because if this is like a movie, there's dramatic music leading up to him asking the question. And you're just like you're just like biding your time. You're waiting, you know, 
Yeah. You're waiting to answer it. Yeah, no. And so so here are the other weird circumstances of this. Um, so, like, I mentioned that I was sitting on the far right side of the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, I only ever sat there that one instance. We only ever, like, before I would always sit towards the left. I only ever sat there because we were doing this Jeopardy thing or whatever in class that day, and we moved seats or something or other. Wow. So that was the only instance where I ever sat there. I couldn't have possibly seen this dude before because that was his first semester teaching. Mm -hmm. So um, if I had the dream like f uh, freshman year, the year prior, I wouldn't have ever seen that guy before. Um, so like he had just started teaching that semester. Um, so like there was no circumstances for me to have dreamed something similar and for it to work that way. Right. Right. It was it, it It just all coincided like that. Um, I had never read Thomas Pynchon before that class. Um, I had never read that Thomas Pynchon story before. And there's no actual relation between Emily Dickinson and, and Thomas Pynchon in this case, right? It's just he happened to be writing that for a different reason. Right. Yeah. It was just another one of the questions because it was it was just American literature. Right. Right. So that's like that's like the one example um, where like there are so many circumstances where I can like prove that, uh, you know, like, like there are not enough coincidences where it'd be just like, oh, yeah, that's, you know, dream logic can bleed into the real world. It was just like, no, there's no way I could have any kind of prior knowledge. Of yeah, that, that could be I'm similar sold here. I'm sold on this. Yeah. Too many details line up. Yeah. And so I've had I've had just like other little um dreams with like precision like that but like not to the extent where it like all lines up where it's just like in the moment it's like oh yeah i, I dreamed this situation before like it's usually um i will dream like just the the like sensory details mostly mm -hmm. like the specific angle of like what i can see with my eyes mostly um because it, I, I don't know if it's like usually like some kind of unique vantage point that I have or whatever that I can just remember from a dream um, and where I could just be like, oh, yeah, I, I know. Or like or just like a phrase someone will say where it's like, I heard I heard you say that in a dream. I knew you were going to say that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's really freaky. Um, yeah. But it, but of course, like those those are the situations where it's hard to hand wave it away, where it's like. Oh, I probably said something similar at some point, and you remember me saying something similar, you know, things like that. Yeah, you don't typically go around yelling Thomas Pynchon. <laughs> right, which is why I use that example, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, another weird thing is that um, I don't know. This is this is a phenomenon that has been happening lately to me, and I don't know if this is like a common thing for people or um, what. But I will have dreams where, like, I will wake up from a dream and, or I will remember something from a dream and I can't remember if I had just recently dreamed it, like the night before, or if I was just now remembering something from a dream from a very long time ago. Oh, interesting. Um, And it's, it's kind of... It's kind of weird where like it'll feel so immediate where it feels like, oh, yeah, that was just a dream I woke up from. But but then it feels off like, no, I feel like you're remembering something from a dream that happened a very long time ago. If that makes sense. Am I making sense? It does make sense because um, like it's, it's very typical to wake up and not like quite remember what you've just dreamed. Right. But you know that you dreamed about something. Um, yeah. But then not knowing that the time that you actually experience that dream whether it was just now like that's interesting yeah I, I don't i can't say i've ever i've ever experienced that I've, I've never like questioned whether it was a different day altogether yeah and then i've been having yeah like i've been having like um i don't know almost like feels like like at a, it, it almost feels like dreams within a dream mm -hmm. where um and i think that's what's kind of screwing with it <laughs> where like i'm remembering something from a dream but I can't place if it was the dream or the dream within a dream. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, it's some inception ass shit. Um, 
It's yeah. got to be like disorienting to wake up and deal with all that. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's, it's very hard to place some shit, especially whenever then you will then like remember a thing from a dream mm -hmm. or like experience a thing that happened in a dream and not be able to place where it came from. Yeah, I think, you know, the what I was talking about earlier with the whole, like, you know, my thing that lasts throughout a day, like the course of a day, the most frustrating thing about that is not being able to grasp exactly what it is that right. I'm being reminded of, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like that, that, like, fuzziness, that, like, inability to really grasp the thing. Yeah. That's, that's, that's so frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard not to feel like you're uh, you're crazy. <laughs> A um, little bit, yeah, yeah. Especially whenever, um, like, like in doing research for this, it's just like, ah, oh, no, this is junk. This is pseudoscience. This is this is some bullshit, uh, you know. And then and then you read, and it's like, yeah, this is a this is all a precursor to schizophrenia. And it's like, oh, <laughs> oh, cool, man. Yeah, sweet. That sounds good. Can't wait. But it's like, I've experienced this shit. Mm hmm So, you know. It's kind of a bummer that the um, the whole Thomas Pynchon thing, it wasn't like something more consequential. No, that's that's the problem, is that it's not, like, I don't have a superpower, you know? It's not like yeah. I can do anything with it. It's just like, oh, I dreamed like this, wasn't, this exact situation. This, this wasn't by any chance like your first time, like, answering a question in class that year, was it? No, I think it was, actually. Okay, so maybe that it was that it was like it was like um, preparing you for your your big moment there. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I got like extra credit or something. I just like it was like it was like a uh, final exam review. Sure. You know? <laughs> yeah. Not even the real final exam, just final exam review. Yeah. I just I just felt uncomfortable in the room because he like was not moving on until somebody answered mm -hmm. and nobody knew the answer. And I did. And how, like, how, like, did you you said you didn't realize it, at the, like, until afterwards? You didn't put the two together that you'd already had this, uh, this experience? Uh, like, as I was, that's the problem, is that, like, I can't recognize it, like, immediately as it's happening. But, like, as I was saying Thomas Pynchon, like, that's mm. whenever it clicked. Mm -hmm. I guess that, like, sensory detail was like, oh, shit. I dreamed this exact thing. And then I sort of, like was like sitting there just like sort of spiraling like why did i dream this exact fucking thing that happened and then you missed the rest of the test review and you failed the exam yeah yeah uh yeah but it's not like i have like the ability to be like oh i'm sitting here right now and then oh i know exactly what's gonna happen like oh ooh, ooh, ooh. it's like right there it has to be like one specific detail that like triggers the um i don't know dream memory i don't, I don't know what it is yeah it's very cool you just kind of wish it was more useful Right. Yeah. It's not like I can um like predict tragedies and disasters and you know, like yeah, it's like I'm step not... in to save the day, no. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a like superpower. Um it's just a weird, weird thing. I don't I, I don't know what to call it. I don't know. Mm hmm But yeah. Like I I've I've like explained it to like family members that are like um weirdly into um you know, that believe in ghosts and shit and stuff, and they always look at me like, like, oh, oh like, oh, you know, like, and then that's kind of it. <laughs> were they were they impersonating a ghost there? I, they just kind of like look at me like, like, oh yeah, oh, oh, yeah. like they don't believe you. No, that no, like they do, but they just like don't know how to react to it. Uh, okay, okay. Like for like like as Catholic as they are, they just kind of are like, yeah, yeah, you know. Well, if you ever go on Jeopardy and the answer to a question is Thomas Pynchon, <laughs> right? But then I'll then I'll fuck it up because I didn't put it in the form of a question. Oh uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, which, by the way, by the way, total aside, but like yeah. the whole Jeopardy format really doesn't make much sense when you think about it. Well, because, because it's like you're giving the questions. Yeah, but it's like. If you do it, if you flip it back around, like it's the question first, mm -hmm. like it'll be like, what is, um, you know, like, uh, or, or, you know, who is uh, Thomas Jefferson or whatever? 
Yeah. And then the answer will just be like this random fact. A very specific. Very specific fact. thing. It's like, yes, it's like that, nobody that would one actually. Is, that yeah. one is the correct answer. We yeah, would it only just doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Honestly, I just find Jeopardy to be pretentious. <laughs> and I felt that way for a long time, but I do feel like it's actually acceptable to come out and say that now. Considering oh, yeah, now the, you're vindicated. The shit show. Yeah, now that, considering the shit show that it's become, I do feel yeah. like it's pretentious. Are they still airing uh, that Bumblefucks episodes? Um, no, I think that's over with. I think they're flipping back and forth between the two <laughs> the two problematic hosts they have sure, now. Sure, sure. I'm. I would be like ratings or whatever, but I'm like very curious what the ratings are. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Anyway. Um, I don't want to derail what we have planned because we have a lot of plans. But did you see this Aaron Rodgers shit? Yes, I did. Did you see what's going on right now? Um, like as in like today? Yeah. There's there's new developments. No, I didn't. I didn't hear about anything today. Aaron Rodgers says that he's in quote in in the crosshairs of the woke mob right now. Oh God, help me! So, do you want to do you want to set up the the proceeding like the, what happened this week with him? Yeah, uh, Aaron Rodgers, quarterback of the uh, um, Green Bay Packers, uh, faked having been vaccinated for COVID, and then surprise, surprise, uh, tested positive for COVID um, because he has a weird shaman guru guy. That was uh, like raising his antibodies in some kind of homeopathic way. And so before the season started, he uh, claimed that he was immunized from uh, COVID-19. And the Packers and the NFL were covering up the fact that he was not uh, uh, vaccinated. In the in the same interview where he called himself immunized he was like he was asked about players on the team that weren't vaccinated and he said something along the lines of yeah you know um i respect their choice (laughs) as if he's not one of them yeah so he was lying completely and then acting like there were other players that were not vaccinated and that he was vaccinated it was the Mm -hmm. slimiest shit um and so then since he was pretending to be vaccinated he didn't have to do shit that unvaccinated players have to do like yep. get a test every day and wear a mask anytime that you are not in full uniform, which includes the helmet. Um, and so he was supposed to be wearing a mask whenever he was doing any kind of media interview. So he was not doing that. He was supposed to be wearing a mask. Anytime he was on the sidelines with his helmet off, he was not doing that. Um, and the NFL and the Packers uh, have been doing cover for him. He was getting special treatment. Yeah, I would say he should be banned from the fucking NFL for this, but the NFL was in on it, so... Yeah, it's a complete joke. It is an absolute mm-hmm. joke. Um, and so this is the first he time he's said anything um, since. I consulted a good friend of mine, Joe Rogan, and I've been doing a lot of the stuff <laughs> he recommended in his podcast. Like, if you if somebody said that these were jokes, I, I, would, I would have believed it. Oh my god, I'm someone who's a critical thinker. It involved a lot of study in the offseason. Wait, so if if he's if he's going off of Joe Rogan's, does that mean he took Invermectin too? He's probably taking it right now, yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. What about my body, my choice? Holy fuck. Did he really did he say that too? Yep. Okay. Holy fuck. Oh man, my favorite, um my favorite is the people who are like in the same breath will say my body, my choice, the anti vaxxers that say that. And he then just said if he's been you- taking ivermectin. Of course, there we go. There we go. I mean, that's not surprising because Joe Rogan took ivermectin. Mm-hmm. Okay, so his homeopathic treatment. It was a way to stimulate my immune system to create a defense against COVID. Yeah, how'd that work out? <laughs> how'd that work out? Oh man, yeah, it's it's gross. Um, you know, he put everybody he came into contact uh, with at risk uh, by lying for all those months. Jesus Christ. Why do people hate ivermectin? Not just because Trump championed it, but because it's a cheap generic and you can't make any money off of it. You know what what sucks? What are you talking about? They sell it. Of course they make money off of it. You know what sucks is that there are people that like work with cows that have to go to like a place and buy (laughs) and buy that stuff. And they're like, they feel weird about it because people think that they, you know, they might be using it on themselves, but they're actually using it for what it's designed for. Right. Absolutely ridiculous. 
the the funny thing is that all these people like there there are these celebrities that are taking ivermectin or finding like these quack doctors that are actually prescribing them ivermectin because you can't get a prescription for it but whenever you have fucking parasites in your gut Mm -hmm. yeah so they are taking the human version of it but it's just doing fucking nothing and so then whenever they actually recover from covid they're like we'll see i took it it's like yeah but it had nothing to do with it it had absolutely nothing to do with it Right. It's like, did you eat pudding too? Does that mean the pudding saved your life? Mm hmm. <laughs> I mean, I think we said this last week, right? The whole correlation does not, uh, does not mean causation. Yeah. These people don't understand that. No. This is, this is some stupid ass shit. Mm hmm. This is so fucking stupid. Holy shit. Yep. And just him well, acting like a baby in the off season by the team and how they didn't, how they didn't care enough about him and blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, the NFL might, you know, have a laughing stock with one of its great quarterbacks right now, but that's okay because another great quarterback has entered the picture. Um, I'm talking about Mike White. Yeah, but didn't he just as quickly leave the picture? Well, he, I mean, he hurt his wrist. Um, he didn't return in that game, but I'm I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure he'll be back pretty soon. Oh, he's not going to be the same though. Did you know that his um, jersey is in Canton? <laughs> you laugh but it's i'm serious okay because he set the nfl record for most completions in a uh in a in the first career start for a quarterback and so they put his jersey and like some other stuff from the game in the hall of fame jesus christ and it's gonna stay there until another person beats that record <laughs> so next season <laughs> So he was like, he was quoted, he was like, um, yeah, I really hope uh, it stays there long enough so that one day I can tell my kids I played in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God. Uh, anyway. All right. Yeah, let's get back on track. Um, so speaking of stupid people. So last week we talked about QAnon and how they believe like everybody is JFK Jr., Mm-hmm. Um, so this week there, uh, was some kind of theory that, um, one, one or maybe more of the JFK juniors would, uh, reveal themselves in downtown Dallas, like at the grassy knoll where JFK junior or JFK senior was assassinated. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they like had a like makeshift rally there. Um, Hundreds of people, right? Hundreds of people. Yeah, at least. And then it kind of petered out. There's there's somebody here that has a Trump JFK Jr. 2021 shirt, which is all kinds of sad. Because, like, they're, part of the thing is that they think that, like, he's going to reveal himself and, like, declare the government illegitimate. Mm -hmm. Because for some reason, JFK Jr. or Trump or both will somehow be revealed as the true president of the real United States because the, the current one is um, some kind of corporation or something. Right. Um, oh, you're talking about Brandon. Oh God. <laughs> so yeah, there's just like all these fucking bums just hanging out in lawn chairs, like on the grassy knoll. And they're just kind of waiting around. Just making a day of it. Yeah. Having a good time. They're shouting, let's go, Brandon. There's Trump Can Kennedy 2020 banners. The thing, you know, the thing that's so funny about let's go, Brandon, is just it's like they're self-censoring. <laughs> yeah, well, because they think that it's like a code. Right. And that, you know, like, oh, like the, the libs don't know. No, it's they're, a meme. Everybody knows. They don't, they're, they could never crack this code. They don't know what we're saying. And of course it originated NASCAR. <laughs> of course. It's it's so stupid, man. I know. It's so stupid I, I, and this unclever is, this and is another, lame. It's just lame. This is another aside here, but I, I was playing somebody online in, in NHL the other day. Yeah. Um and, and first of all, I knew they were like a troll because they you can you can um change the players' jersey numbers, like in case you have two players on your team that have the same number. Mm-hmm. Um so every player on this person's team was number 69. Sure, sure. Which, man, that would be so 
like disorienting for me if I was controlling that team, just like <laughs> trying to figure out who has the puck at any given moment, just ridiculous. But yeah. anyway, so it's like, yeah, they're clearly trolling. Um, and then after the game, they messaged me with uh, Let's Go Brandon just to top it off. Great. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the awesome. other thing was that their their team name was was five for fighting, and and after every whistle, they try to start a fight. Great, like yeah. what, what is the the not the fighting has sucked in those games like for twenty years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like it's not even there's, it's not even fun. No, there's nothing fun about it. Um, like sometimes uh, there will be a fight like that accidentally gets started like so, so if somebody lands like a really nasty hit and you might accidentally like initiate a fight and i'm like oh shit i have to go through this whole sequence now right you know? it's just it's a it's a it's a pain like it's there's nothing there's nothing enjoyable about it yeah i think they like took the mechanics from like a fight night game that ea made like a <laughs> decade or two ago yeah um but it's still very clumsy and really doesn't doesn't quite work but anyway so yeah so like all these people waited they waited until at least like from the early morning until like 3 p.m and of course nobody showed up um at one point they just started yelling the pledge of allegiance out loud Mm -hmm. like in between let's go brandon chants (laughs) like like not even singing like the star spangled banner just like yelling the pledge of allegiance like in the aftermath their latest theory is that Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones is GF, J, GFJ, JFK Jr. <laughs> now. Interesting. They just, it's like, maybe I'm JFK Jr. Like, yeah, I was just going to say, like, how come nobody's capitalized on this and just, like, decided to become JFK Jr. and just, like, take up the mantle for these people? Well, th- there's, like, 20 of them that have. Oh, okay. <laughs> there, it's just all these QAnon wackos. All you have to do is like kind of wear like a grungy like grungy hair and maybe a beard like 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 kind of look like you're in disguise and they might mm-hmm. think you're JFK Jr. Like you put on a hat like you could put on like one of those fucking gla- nose glasses mustache. You know, disguises. I've been thinking I've been thinking about how to promote this podcast. Yeah. And what if we or one of us, I guess, because maybe two wouldn't be. Well, maybe. Great. Could be two. Maybe two. Dueling JFKs. Yeah, what if we both decide to become dueling JFKs, um, but it's all just like marketing for for the Dead End Roadshow? Sure. Yeah. You know, we get the spotlight. And we have to have a debate on which one of us is the... The real... Yeah. No, but we're actually both arguing for the other person. Yes. So it's like you're... <laughs> I'm like arguing it's that like, you're no, JFK. You're, you're JFK. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I was not expecting the um the Keith Richards at the end. It's it's sort of a Shyamalan twist at the end. Uh, yeah, they just keep on keep on trucking. The the t shirts the t shirts are about as like they 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 age as soon as they get printed. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> the Trump JFK Jr. 2020 t shirt and then the 2021 t shirt. It's like oh okay. I'd like to see somebody with like one of the 2020 shirts and then they just like <laughs> they just like put a piece of tape over the the last right. zero <laughs> you yeah. know and put a one like yeah, right it's like whenever one. it's like whenever somebody's uh like somebody on a sports team changes their jersey number exactly yeah and yeah you just get a like a one. patch yeah oh uh, yeah yeah so tune in next week to see which celebrity is jfk jr next um maybe it'll be robert downey jr that would be something All right, let's do the Blackhawks. Uh, these fuckers. Um, I should probably preface this will be a content warning for um, sexual abuse, sexual assault, because I imagine a lot of people haven't heard because it's been relegated to the NHL space, unfortunately. So if uh, people aren't aware, um, the Blackhawks are currently uh, mired in um, a, a sexual abuse uh, scandal. Um where uh, ten years ago, um, there uh, they had a video coach, uh, Brad Aldrich, 
who um, assaulted a, a player who was part of the uh, Black Aces uh, squad, which um, for in hockey terms um, is a group of players where after the minor league season ends, you can call up a group of players for the playoffs that um, are sort of like a, a practice squad uh, or like um, emergency call-ups and they can practice with the team but they're they're from the minor league team after their season ends and they're there for the playoffs uh, so they can get some experience being with the main team and uh, they're there for emergency basis or to potentially just even make make the playoff team uh, if they need to um, and so this video coach uh, abused uh, one of the members of the um, the black aces the originally um, only known as John Doe one, uh, but uh, based on the details, uh, people figured out who it was. Um, and then that person uh, came forward in an interview with TSN. Uh, it is Kyle Beach is the name of the person that was abused. Um, so that's like fine to say because they came forward uh, personally themselves on their own terms. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, he, Kyle Beach, uh, told, um, I believe, um, was this a, a, a skills coach, um, at the time mm-hmm. and, uh, skills coach took it forward to, uh, I think, I don't, I don't remember the exact chain, uh, right. here, but, um, the skills coach took it to at least the coach and probably the general manager, I believe was the case. Um, and, uh, this was, Basically, uh, after the Western Conference Finals, so this is like right before the Stanley Cup Final uh, in 2010, and basically what happened was that the Blackhawks covered it up. <laughs> yeah, they... <laughs> basically what happened. They they allowed Aldrich, uh, Aldrich to um, be with the team through the Cup victory. Yes, um, so he won the, the Stanley Cup with them. He quietly resigned in the offseason, correct? Yes. Um, and then he went on to be hired by a school, a school's hockey team, where he sexually assaulted a, a teenage player on that team. Yes. So. And to make matters somehow worse... He had his name etched onto the cup as part of the 2010 Stanley Cup winning Blackhawks, uh, and then had every every player, or every person in the organization, players, coaches, general managers, all get to have one day with the cup to celebrate. That's right. He was still included in part of that celebration. He got his day with the Stanley Cup. Yeah, even after the fact. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, he, he left, he left that team as a Stanley cup winning, uh, coach, uh, with, you know, all the future prospects that came with it. And and we saw what happened as a result of that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the Blackhawks didn't make this public, didn't warn anyone else. And it ended up with the case where he was hired by high school and was allowed to continue his abuse. Yes. He was, uh, Found guilty of that abuse, I think I believe in 2013. Uh, that was that happened in Michigan, and he was um, charged. I think he only served like a year or maybe a couple years for it. Um, and he yeah, it was not a lot of time. No, no, and he's he's out and free now. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, the, the only reason uh, this came out was because of uh, an investigation, uh, an independent investigation. Um, by a law firm into the Blackhawks handling of this case. And it, it, it is, it is a, a, um, a complete embarrassment the way the Blackhawks completely covered this up. Just every little detail that has come out has been absolutely disgusting. There was, there was this meeting where the coaches and general managers all met to, discuss what they should do after it was brought to their attention what Aldrich had done to Kyle Beach and they basically agreed that uh, the Stanley Cup was more important 
and that uh, they would maybe do something afterwards. Uh, and that is exactly what they did. Um, the coach, Joel Quenville, uh, specifically said that uh, in the meeting, there's a quote where it was basically like, win at all costs. And that is exactly what they did. Um, so, yeah, uh, what this ended up being, uh, Kyle Beach, he was a first round draft pick. This ended his career. Uh, he he uh, was mentally scarred, as as you might imagine. Um, and the Blackhawks basically blackballed him. Um, they labeled him uh, as uh, as having poor character. They they basically slandered him. Uh, the the players on the team quickly found out about the incident, um, and were making uh, homophobic remarks to him uh, on the team. And then afterward, never uh, talked about it publicly, uh, even though they all knew. Do we know like if any of those players are still on the team? Oh yes, we do. Oh yes, we do. Okay. Uh, because it was uh, Taves and Kane are definitely still there. Okay, and they were a part. We know that they were a part of that. We know that they were on the team. Right. Taves was the captain. Yes. Hard to imagine that that he wouldn't know. Yeah. Um, especially being the captain. Um, yeah. There are other players that were on the team that have since spoken up and said that, yes, everybody on the team knew. Okay. Okay. It's really, really disgusting, uh, especially because Taves, uh, his fucking public persona is... Oh, he's such this this immaculate leader. What leadership he always shows and blah, 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 blah. And then this comes out and, okay, well, what the fuck's wrong with you to let this go on in your locker room? I had sort of bought into that idea of Taves as well over the years. Um, so. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, it's awful. I knew it was phony because it was, it, it always seemed like it was smoke blowing up his ass, but then. It's like, okay, you let this go on in your locker room. It's like, maybe you didn't participate, but you just allow this to go on mm -hmm. to to a minor league player that's supposed to be, like, basically in your care. Like, that's not a leader. That's not no. a captain. No. So, yeah, here's here's a quote from Kyle Beach himself. Uh, word spread pretty, pretty quick. I do believe everyone in that locker room knew about it because the homophobic comments were made in the locker room. They were made on the ice. They were made around the arena. Around the arena. Yeah. Wow. Um, and so afterwards, uh, the Blackhawks uh, dismissed their general manager, Stan Bowman, who is still with the team. Um, and uh, I forget this first name, but McIsaac, who is like their uh, team president. And they they basically had nothing to say to defend themselves for it. They're just they're just gone. Right. Um supposedly the owner had no didn't know it didn't make its way there it was the uh the gm and the team president sweeping this under the rug um personally i don't know if i believe it but whatever mm -hmm. um the nhl's response has not been good whatsoever either oh it's it's been it's been um it's been it's been tough to 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 watch no, it, 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 it's the NHL fined the team $2 million. Which is, you know, if you want to compare it to, to something else, it's significantly less of a punishment than, um, you know, teams that have circumvented the salary cap, for example. Yeah. So that's basically the National Hockey League telling us that uh, circumventing the salary cap is a greater crime than covering up a uh sexual abuse for over a decade yes an actual which is, crime yeah which is just um it's 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 unacceptable i mean it's just it's horrific yeah yeah this is this is a franchise that is worth billions of dollars this is like one of the most lucrative franchises in the league mm -hmm. um an original six team with with um for better or worse you know a, a very marketable uh brand well, maybe not anymore, but um, they're worth billions and billions of dollars. The The response has been terrible. Joel Quenville, the Blackhawks coach at the time, he won three Stanley Cups with the team, was the coach of the Panthers. Uh, whenever this came out, 
uh, what Quenville had said and uh, had done. Um, he coached the next night mm-hmm. with the with the Panthers. Yep. Um, neither the Panthers nor the league thought uh, it was um, important that he should maybe not coach the night all of this would go down. They thought it was okay. Um, well, the Panthers, hey, you know, the Panthers at that time, they're uh, they're the talk of the league. They're like undefeated. They're the best team in the league. You know, he's he's uh, coaching the best team in the league. I, you know, hockey's more important, right? Yeah, this is this is a quote from Gary Bettman, the league's commissioner. Should Quenville had coached on Wednesday night, I'm sure people could quibble with that. But he's Ugh. already coached 867 games at that point, And I didn't want him to think I had prejudged him at that point. Oh, my God. Yeah, there, so, there, there would be nothing wrong with holding him out of one game until you had reached a conclusion on what to do with him. And so, turns out the league uh, didn't decide what they were going to do with him anyway. Uh, he resigned from the Panthers. Uh, the Panthers didn't even fire him. And this is basically a technicality because if they fired him, uh, they would owe him the remainder of his contract. So... Um, it ends up being better that he resigns, but it also looks like he's saving face that he resigns right, rather than being right. fired. Um, um, so the Gary, the Gary Bettman of it all. Yeah. Um, it seems like a lot of, like I, I was listening to, uh, by the way, I was listening to Steve Dangle podcast, uh, their coverage of this whole ordeal and it's, they, they do a really good job with it. Um, mm-hmm. they were talking about the Bettman, uh, press conference from earlier this week. Absolutely. Absolutely terrible response. I, I just honestly just can't terrible. imagine. I can't imagine them handling it much worse. No. Um, they came out as two robots essentially, uh, but Batman and uh, Bill something, I forget his name daily. Yeah. So they came out in their lawyer speak and basically just like try to dodge any sort of meaningful response. Um, like at every turn, they, you know, Bettman flat out just like pretended he didn't know certain details that everybody in the world, in the hockey world knows about these cases. The worst one was whenever he's given a fucking softball question mm-hmm. to if he will provide if the league will step up and provide counseling to John Doe 2, the teenage player that Aldrich abused in high school, yep, provide uh, that player and his family counseling sessions yep. because uh, the league is providing Kyle Beach counseling sessions. A fucking softball of a question. The, f- the first words out of his mouth should just be yes. It's so easy. So fucking easy. The easiest thing in the world. But what he actually said was... <laughs> was... That, yeah, go ahead. Was, uh, I I don't know the, the facts of that case, basically. And he also added to that the fact that this abuse did not happen at the NHL level. Therefore, it's not really his concern at the moment, right? Yeah. Which yeah. is just, just stunning. Um, just, just the absolute worst... The worst response I could think of. You could not. You mm-hmm. could not handcraft a worse response other than maybe "fuck them kids." Like, <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, seriously, yeah. Um, what are you? What are you saying? Yeah, it was a disaster. And like, also to to add a little bit to this, uh, the reporter who broke this whole story, um, they've been sort of like uh, they've been sort of like avoiding him at the yeah. press conferences and whatnot. So mm-hmm. it took them, it took them like 45 minutes out of a 50 minute press conference to, um, allow him a question. Yeah. So. Yep. Um, yeah, that, that, that question is, it's it, the fact that you're going to claim ignorance on a, a case that was decided in 2013. You're telling me that you don't know. Then, then that's not that's not ignorance. That is incompetence. Yeah, that's what um, they they said on 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 Steve Dangle's show. There's two possible explanations for that answer, right? One of them is gross incompetence. The other one is he's lying, right? And either one of those is very bad. Yeah. 
Um, they also pointed out, which I think gets to the, the core of the problem here, is that Bettman lacks any sort of emotional intelligence that is required in a situation like this. Um, cause like he did come out in the very monotone, like matter of fact lawyer speak, and he just tried to like dodge and weave through this press conference. And that's not, it's not what the league needs. Um, it's not what the public needs at, at this time. Like it's just, no. it's just not. Um, no, they, they they don't have any kind of crisis management PR. It's like they're they're trotting out the suits to like maybe skirt their way around this, mm-hmm. and and they're just blowing it at every chance. Like just the easiest, the easiest shit, the easy shit. They're just trying to avoid any kind of potential legal liability for absolutely anything. Right. When they can't even just do the bare minimum decent things. Yeah, and and the the like that I case s- that case is is solved. Like or you know like concluded. Like mm-hmm. you don't just say yes, we will provide we will provide counseling. Yes. Does it it, it doesn't matter like the logistics of whatever. Just say yes. Yeah, the the NHL level comment really s- stuck with me. Um it's, it's just like implying that this this case of abuse doesn't matter because it didn't happen in your league directly. Like right. even even though it, you know the the sequence of events, the the Blackhawks cover up led to this man being hired elsewhere and continuing right. the abuse that he was doing. Like it's all it's all goes back to your league. Um, these are hockey pl- like these are players in your worlds uh, connected to your worlds. Uh, this case is very much you know. Yeah. You're in it. Like it's your responsibility. Trying to trying to wave away responsibility at this time is just not the move. Yeah. No, th- this is the this is the highest office in the hockey world. Mm-hmm. You know? Like this is what younger players look up to. Like the like, you know, this is the, this is like the top of the mountain. This is and the this representative. Is, this is yeah. the, this is the representative. And and this is what you're being given back is we don't give a shit, basically. Yeah, we don't we don't give a shit. We don't give a shit. Um, you know, as long you know, unless it affects us legally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they care about that so much that, and obviously I'm not a lawyer, but it's like they're skirting around any potential, like where people aren't even talking about the repercussions for the league legally. But they're just trying to clean their hands so completely and totally, you know, mm-hmm. like there has not even been a modicum of rumblings about like John Doe two like seeking damages from the league whatsoever. Right. You know, it seems like they want to be done with it. Like that, th- you know, totally like like that family wants to move the fuck on and want nothing to do with this. Mm-hmm. But it's like, nope, the league wants to just be like. We have nothing to do with any of that, you know, like forget looking for fucking apologies. God, you're not going to find anything resembling anything like that, you know, like Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Then there is uh, the response to the Winnipeg Jets general manager, uh, Kevin Shovel Dayoff who was the assistant general manager in of the Blackhawks in 2010, who the league has decided gets to get off scot-free, despite the fact that he was in the meeting at the time and knew of the knew of the abuse. Um and he just he gets he gets no punishment. He gets to stay with his team, his current team. He gets to stay with the Jets. Uh what is like, the reasoning there? The reasoning is that one, he apparently showed up to the meeting slightly later than everybody else. And two, uh, he was the salary cap guy and didn't have any interactions with the coaches. Hmm. I I I I cannot be- I cannot believe. This is this is this is the stupidest shit. So they're taking him at his word whenever he's saying that uh yeah, they said it would be taken care of, so I thought it would be taken care of. It's like, okay, 
So whenever it wasn't, and this dude was coaching throughout the Stanley Cup, then had his day with the cup, had his name on the cup, Mm -hmm. you thought that was taken care of and you thought to remain quiet for 10 years? Well, he's a salary guy. He was too focused on the salaries. It's an absolute absolute joke. It really is. And then in his response... um. He he says, uh, I express my support and empathy for Kyle Beach and all he's had endured. He's incredibly brave. Blah, 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 blah. We want to make a safer place. And then the rest of his response. Further, I want to express my gratitude to the National Hockey League for the opportunity to meet with Commissioner Bettman in person and directly share my role and recollection of the events while I was assistant GM of the Chicago Blackhawks in 2010. And that's the, that's it. Brutal. That's it. I tweeted. I was like, oh, I, I feel like this got cut off. Uh, where's the rest of it? Yeah, seriously. What the fuck? It, it's 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 um, it's surprising because uh the the president of the Winnipeg Jets, a guy who truly has absolutely nothing to do with this situation whatsoever, aside from hiring this fucking jag off this shovel day off, um, gave a uh, a very thoughtful uh, response to the media, um, because he's part of a a a, a council of um, like top like upper brass uh, like of different teams in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's talking about using like the, the Jets foundation to create initiatives to um, create support systems for youth hockey. And, um, and he got emotional during his like talking to the media. Um, and this is a guy that has absolutely nothing to do with like the situation, like on a, on a personal level. Right. Um, and he and that's that's his you know response and he's like actually like taking action, um, yes. But everybody that's directly involved is like just trying to wash their hands of it. Like I should mention, um, the National Hockey League has no policy on sexual assault. Yeah, no policy when it comes to sexual assault. Yeah, Wh- their whatsoever. Pol- their, their policy is basically, oh, w- w- uh, uh, we'll handle it. Which we saw how that worked out. Yes. So, yeah. Have so, they said that? Have they said that they're going to institute one? No. No, they said that they're they're uh, we 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 handle it. But but we just no, it didn't work. Mm-hmm. It, it clearly didn't work. This was covered up. Mm-hmm. And you're still trying to sweep it under the rug. Yeah, there's been nothing um, in the past few weeks that have. Uh reassured me that anything is progressing um to maybe prevent this kind of thing in the future um not at all no so no it's it's um, a it's a really uh it's a pretty bleak time for for the nhl right now it really is it's it's made it because um before this i was watching a lot of a lot of games mm-hmm. uh, more than the penguins i was watching a lot of west coast games at night and it has just soured it's like i gave i gave money to this fucking leak buying this TV package. Like I, Mm -hmm. it's been speaking of the uh, penguins. There was another story this week. Yes. Which I think you probably know more than I do. about Yes. So, um, I, I feel like I would be remiss if I didn't bring this up. Um, and I, I knew some of the details about this, but, uh, in, in, in wake of, uh, the Blackhawks thing, uh, some of the, more details about this um, situation uh, are coming out as well. The The Penguins uh, are in the midst of a bit of a similar situation where currently in the middle of a lawsuit um, with uh, a former assistant coach of the minor league team, the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins, um, who... Um, uh, has alleged that uh, the former head coach of the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins, um, I forget his first name, but uh, Donato, um, assaulted uh, his wife um, after a dinner the three of them had, uh, I believe in 20, it was either 2018 or 2019. Mm-hmm. Um this is um from the the, the scalds the, that's their last name s k a l d e um and so the the two of them are um bringing this case um against the penguins um against uh Mario Lemieux specifically against cuz he's the owner uh against Ron Burkle the other owner 
Um, and uh, against this this former coach, obviously, Jared Scald, the the um, assistant coach, brought this to the attention of uh, former assistant GM Bill Guerin, who um, his role as the assistant GM was to be the general manager of the minor league team, the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. So he was mm-hmm. he was in charge of overseeing the uh, the team. Basically, he he fired the coach, and I believe he never brought it to anybody else's attention that this happened. Um, if so he, he, did, he fired the coach that is accused of committing the yes, assault? Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of different people here. So he fired Donato, who was the um, the the uh, the offending coach. Right. Um, and I, I, I don't believe he brought it to anybody else's attention. And if he did, I think it would have been the um, the GM, the, the, the Penguins GM at the time, uh, Jim Rutherford. Um, but he the, the Scalds are alleging that he basically said to them that uh, they had to keep it quiet, like they couldn't let it get out. I don't understand why. Like, I don't like I just don't get why um, if you're going to fire somebody. Why would you not give the reason? I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, Garen is no longer with the Penguins. He is now the uh, general manager of the Minnesota Wild. Mm-hmm. Um, he's claiming that he he did things the right way. Um, uh, so are the Penguins. Uh, their statement was not great, mostly because of the line where they say that uh, the Scalds waited seven months after the incident to bring it to anybody's attention. That's not... Uh. So, yeah. Um, other than that, um, and aside from getting law enforcement involved, um, I, you know, I don't know what else they, they could necessarily want from them. It, it, like, it seems like action was taken... Like as soon as it was, it was brought to Garen's attention, mm-hmm. um, the 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 only things that should have been done differently, obviously, are like that. Fuck it, like you know, the the victim blaming language there. Oh yeah, that's really that's really bad. It's it's bad. It's bad. Um, and the whole saying, you know, keep this under wraps, shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like what? Why? Why? Why are you? Why are? Why are you defending this? You know, you, like you're firing him. Like you don't need to go to bat for him. Yeah, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Let let this be public. Like you took mm-hmm. care of it. Like mm-hmm. so. Yeah. Uh, in 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 the Skulls case against Donato, they're also alleging that um he, uh, he abused uh or assaulted uh some other friends of theirs. Mm -hmm. Um, so this was like a pattern. Um, I don't know if those people are coming forward or if they're like, they're going to be at least witnesses in their case. Um, I don't, I'm not sure. Not up to the level of what happened in Chicago, but, uh, a situation. Um, and I, I feel like it was necessary to, uh, also talk about it. Yeah, because it it kind of speaks to like a, a larger problem of like, there needs to be like a fundamental way and how things like this are handled, this right. change, you know, yeah. across the board. Um, cause in both cases it's, it's, you know, mi- majorly mishandled situations. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And I remember when, um, that, uh, Donato guy was hired, um, he was seen as like, if things didn't work out with Mike Sullivan, the current Penguins coach, he was seen as a potential successor to the head coaching role Mm-hmm. for the for the penguins um and then like whenever he was suddenly fired people didn't really know what had happened there yeah th- i remember this coming out and then um whenever the story came out that uh there was this it was because of a sexual assault i was like oh well you know they fired him so at least that that was at least they did that yeah but it's like it's like if now there are claims that he's assaulted like multiple people and like all right. this and he has this history right. and it's like well you know did he did he go on to work somewhere else? Exactly. Right. Right. 
Yeah. So not having that information known for potential like future employers is a, is a huge problem. Right. I don't understand why they like this, this reflex to like this cover up reflex. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. It's very, it's very bizarre. Um, very, uh, very damaging. Yeah. Cause like this, this looks so much, so much worse, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. There are some sort of like conspiracy theories about, uh, you know, um, the Penguins general manager f- uh, from last year, uh, well, from previous years, but he he resigned sort of suddenly last year, uh, mm-hmm. Jim Rutherford. Um, now people are wondering if this had anything to do with it. Didn't that happen in like the first week of the regular season last year? It was like the first month. Yeah. First month. Yeah. So it was um, a very unusual time. It was very unusual. Um, the the his his he never fully explained why he just up and left, mm-hmm. even though he did some media interviews afterwards. Um, so like, so the you know some fan theories are kind of going wild. Like, did this now have anything to do with it? If it was brought to his attention, and he kind of wanted to you know wash his hands clean of it. Or, you know, is that just, just rampant speculation and, you know, he left for hockey or personal reasons, it, you know. There needs to be, there needs to be transparency. There really does. There really does. Um, so, if, and, and if this really was the case where this was like all Bill Guerin and he didn't bring it to anybody higher because he, he, his role was, he was the general manager of the wilkes team that was his mm-hmm. role as assistant mm-hmm. gm um then you know I, I i don't believe that this is a case of like where he's the fall guy for this right um because it was widely known like that is the role that um the assistant gm has with the penguins that's been the case for many 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 years um where the assistant gm is the general manager of the the farm team mm-hmm. um so if he if he didn't bring it any higher than you know his level and he was the one that was taking care of it, I don't know. Like at this point, we don't have enough. Maybe whenever this trial goes forward, this is a civil case. You know, they're seeking damages. Um, you know, if if this if this goes to trial, uh, we'll get the full details, or maybe the Penguins will look to settle. I but who knows? I I, I really don't know. Yeah, it's kind of a wait and see at this point. Right. Yeah. But um. I felt it was uh, necessary to bring this up uh, in addition. So I think we have the uh, Penguins versus the Minnesota Wild coming up, don't we? I think we do. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's weird too because, like, um, Penguins, like, Garen left the Penguins on good terms mm-hmm. as well, you know, because he just left to go be the general manager of the Wild. Like, it wasn't um, he was let go or anything like that. Right. Um, Penguins have done deals with the Wild since, actually. Um, so, yeah, it's it's tough. It's 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 been tough to watch games with like all of this going on in the back. It really yeah. has been. Mm-hmm. Um, I've definitely watched less. I've just kind of been kind of just been watching the Penguins, but um, yeah, yeah. So we should wrap this one up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. Bit of, right. downer, bit of a downer, bit of a downer episode, bit of a downer, unnecessary but, um, one. Yeah, you know, yeah, because if we could talk about, you know, stupid hockey stuff, we can get into um, systemic issues plaguing the hockey oh, yeah. world. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and then uh, I don't need to get into the stupid apes. Oh, God. Yeah, well, if you want to include that, if you want to include that in our in our next uh, next episode, too, we could do that. Yeah, 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 we could do that. Um but yeah, thank you so much for listening. Uh, we really do appreciate it. I tried a new editing situation uh, for last week's episode. Um, so hopefully this streamlines both the editing process and then cuts down on more pauses and hopefully decreases the run times and makes it easier to listen to. Um, and so feedback's appreciated on that. Uh, hopefully it'll be a better listening experience. Um, as always, you can follow me on Twitter at Road. Uh, Facebook.com slash Denner Road TV, uh, Twitch, twitch.tv slash Denner Road TV, 
and you could do YouTube search for Dinner Road TV. And you could always email us at uh, anything at all at video at dinnerroad.co. And check out the Fred's First Adventure uh, book and plush bundles over at publishing.dinnerroad.co. Uh, yeah, that should be everything. Uh, we will see you next week with some movie discussion, some fucking NFT bullshit, um, and more. All right. Should we tell them what movie we're talking about in case maybe they want to oh, check it out? Oh, yeah, we time? should do that. Yeah. Um, we're going to be talking about. Uh, Titan, Titan. I forget how they said it in the movie. I believe it's Titan. Okay, because they said it once, but I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're gonna stop this recording and go talk about that because uh, run times. But um. Yes. Yeah. See All you right. next week. See you next week. <laughs>